Today's lesson is going to start a little differently than what we have in the past because we're starting with a sentence from Douglas Adams' sci-fi book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The opening lines of this book read, In the beginning, the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and had, has been widely regarded as a bad move. This opening line is supposed to have a little bit of sarcasm and a little bit of humor to it. However, I bring this up because by the end of this lesson, you will know exactly why this particular opening line is grammatically incorrect. And that is because we have an error in what is called active and passive voice, which is the focus of this particular lesson. So let's start with talking about the active voice because that is probably the more the easier of the two voices to start with. So active voice is very simply when the subject of the sentence performs the action of the verb. That sounds really easy. You might be thinking, but Ms. Kreider, like every single sentence starts this way. And honestly, it actually does not. So whenever we use active voice, the thing that is actually doing the action is being used as the subject of our sentence. So I have two examples. So the first is Mr. Skak hit the ball out of the park. So Mr. Skak is obviously the one who's up to bat. He is the one who is actively hitting the ball and making it go out of the ballpark. Another example would be most of the teachers wear lanyards. In this case, this is a weird one. If we were marking up parts of a sentence, you would cross out of the teachers and we'd be, because that's a prep phrase, and we are left with most wear lanyards. What that is saying is most, this group, is doing the action of the sentence. So you might be thinking, well, active voice is easy. Every sentence is written in active voice. And the problem is it is not. And that's where we get into the second kind of voice called passive voice. So passive voice is when the subject of the sentence has the action of the verb happen to it. What I mean by that is that the person who is doing the action is not actually the subject of the sentence. Uh, my examples uh, will help us kind of understand this better. So let's talk through this first example. It says the song was sung by Miss Kreider. Okay. If I was marking this up by parts of a sentence, I would cross out by Miss Kreider. Okay, it's a prep phrase, we don't need it. And then I'm left with the song was sung. Now here's the problem. When you see something like the song was sung, okay, awesome, but can a, a song, song cannot actually sing itself. Somebody has to sing it, which is why we're left with this little was here, okay? So if I would reword this to actually tell me who is doing the verb, I would have to reword this to Miss Kreider sung the song, okay? This is a kind of situation where our subject gets put into a prep phrase and our direct, what should be the direct object actually becomes the subject of the sentence, which is grammatically incorrect. The second example is kind of the same thing. The new TikTok dance was performed by the students. Once again, if I cross out by the students, then I am left with the new TikTok dance was performed. A TikTok dance can't actually perform itself, okay? So if I would reword this from the passive voice, AKA where the subject or the direct object is actually the subject of the sentence and take it into the active voice where the person who is actually doing the verb is the subject of the sentence, I would have to reword this to the students were or the students performed the new TikTok dance. Now, it is important to note that whenever you have passive voice, most likely we're doing it with a verb phrase that starts with one of the eight forms of be before the action verb. So we have a helping verb before the action verb, okay? So not always is that the case, but for the most part, if it is in passive voice, we're gonna have one of those eight forms of B, but not everything that uses the eight forms of B would be in passive voice. So I have, which one do we use? Most of the time we want to use active voice for your writing. It just helps to keep your writing clear and to the point. Also, most of your PSSA types of questions for this are going to ask you to take 
a sentence from passive voice and reword it to active voice. So it might give you one of those four sentences and ask you which one of these four sentences needs to be reworded into active voice from passive voice or has a active voice error or a passive voice error. So let's look at these two sentences before we continue on. So I have my first one, which is Jim jumped out of the plane versus the plane was jumped out of by Jim. In this first sentence, Jim is my subject of the sentence. He is the one who is doing this jumping out of the plane. He's probably skydiving, doing things that I personally don't want to do ever in my life. Um, but uh, he is the one who is jumping out, and we know that he is doing this out of the plane, which is in the prep phrase. Now, on the other hand, we have the plane was jumped out of by Jim. We will cross out, um, cross out of by Jim, and then it was just the plane was jumped out. We don't know who is doing the jumping in this sentence. We don't know who is, like, we don't, it's just a weird sentence. The plane was jumped out of is just a weird sentence because it doesn't tell us who is doing it or what is doing it. It leaves a lot of questions. So that is why, sorry, that is why the plane was jumped out of by Jim is not a sentence we want to use. We want to use Jim jumped out of the plane. So it is important to when you are using either the active voice or the passive voice that your sentence needs to be either in completely in one voice. If you start, let's say you start your sentence in passive voice, not a problem. You can switch to active voice later in the sentence. And obviously this is a bigger deal for compound, complex, and compound complex sentences. So let's look at my example. I have when the student pulled the fire alarm, a loud ringing was heard. So when the students pulled the fire alarm, so that dependent clause is in active voice, but then a loud ringing was heard. Who heard the loud ringing? The, we don't know who actually heard this loud ringing. It's not clear, and that part is in passive voice. So no, I hate this sentence because it is not consistent. So if I was rewriting this sentence, I would try, obviously, if we're starting active voice, we want in the dependent clause, we want the independent clause to also be an active voice. So my rewrite would be when the student pulled the fire alarm, Ms. Kreider heard a loud ringing. It is telling who is actually doing the hearing. Obviously, in that first sentence, a loud ringing was heard, but we don't know who is doing the hearing. So it's important to make sure we are clear with who is doing the subject of the sentence, okay? So I'm going to give you a quick tip because sometimes you are going to have a sentence where you are just honestly not sure, and that is okay. So my biggest tip is if you don't have a by phrase already, um, try to add the phrase by zombies to the end of the sentence. It's a little fun, but it's always a good one. Um, if you add... Uh, the phrase by zombies to the end of your sentence and the sentence makes sense, then your sentence is in passive voice. Okay. So let's look at my example. I have the room was cleaned. Okay. I am not sure uh, what that sentence means. Uh, I'm not sure if it is an active voice or if it is in passive voice. However, if I add the phrase by zombies to the end, it would turn into the room was cleaned by zombies. Okay, that sentence makes sense because guess what? It tells me who is doing the cleaning, um, which means that this sentence is in passive voice. If I added by zombies to the end and I wanted to reword it into active voice, that sentence would be the zombies cleaned the room, which is kind of funny to think about. I don't think zombies actually clean rooms. So with that, Let's loop back to this first line of Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The sentence begins, in the beginning, the universe was created. My challenge to you at the end of the sentence, at the end of this lesson, is to go ahead and uh, create, turn this sentence from active voice or from passive voice into active voice. I will see you the next time we have some practice. Bye, everyone.